Do not, I repeat, do not build blade for attack. This will not work. He primarily scales off of HP. He works differently than a lot of other characters in the game. Build for HP, HP, HP. What's up, you sweaty nerds and greasy degenerates? It's time to talk about how to build Blade, because he's come out hot on the scene with sexy hair, a sexy body, and a sexy voice, and more importantly, he's the second best DPS in the game. But he does have some problems if we are trying to maximize his potential. He's a little bit harder to build, and he's a bit picky if you want to maximize what he can do. But there are some things we can do to maximize his potential, regardless of whether we have certain characters or not. So let's talk about it. Now let's talk about what people are calling Blade's signature set. Now, this set is actually going to work on more characters than just Blade. For instance, when Jing Liu eventually comes out, this set is also going to be really good on Jing Liu, and I'll explain why in just a moment, but let's talk about this set real quick. The two-piece bonus increases the max HP by 12%. Okay, now, like I was saying earlier, Blade scales primarily off of HP. Just forget that attack even exists when you think about building Blade, okay? I want to gaslight you guys, okay? I want to give you guys amnesia, okay? I want to brainwash you guys. Attack doesn't exist, okay? Only focus on HP, it will increase his survivability, and more importantly, it will increase his damage output. Increasing HP increases his damage. Get that burnt into your skull when you're thinking about Blade, okay? Now let's talk about the four-piece bonus. When the wearer is hit or has their HP consumed by an ally or themselves, their crit rate increases by 8% for two turns and it stacks up to two times. Now, that specific wording there, consumed by an ally or themselves, that an ally will refer to characters like Jing Liu and that themselves line will refer to characters like Blade because it will work even if you're doing it to themselves, okay? So this works for Blade, this works for characters like for Jing Liu. If you have another character on the team that is that is using this as well, um, Blade can actually trigger this for the other character as well, if you're so inclined to do that. Now, I would specifically focus on this set alone when focusing for Blade. I'm not even going to tell you about another relic set for Blade because this is the best one. This is the most optimal one to use. Go for the four piece bonus on this set. Get all four pieces and build Blade around this particular relic set right here. You could try to do a split situation where you get the two piece bonus on this, increasing his damage output by giving him more HP, or, and you know, maybe use a different set on the other two piece bonus, but I wouldn't bother doing that because the four piece bonus is also very very good as well he can build really good crit rate on his character and through substats so i would go for building his max damage output and also going for crits because crits don't care about attack or hp crits are crits they just deal increased damage with neg negligible of what's scaling off of it so that's really really good focus on this set for blade Okay, now let's talk about some of the substats you're going to want to go for on this gear before we talk about the planar spheres and some of the team compositions we're going to go into because Blade's very picky, like I was saying. He wants certain characters on his team with him rather than others. He's just going to be that way. He's a little bit harder to build, but look, the headpiece for this set, you're going to have the flat HP stat on the headpiece no matter what. Then after that, you're going to want to try to find HP percent. The percent numbers are better than the flat numbers. It always works like that. So you're going to want to see HP percent. You're going to want to see like crit rate. You're going to want to see maybe break effect is okay. You're not going to want things like defense. Defense is not a good stat for Blade because Blade wants to take damage. If he has too much defense, he won't lose enough health. So just keep that in mind. If you have something like a flat defense stat, it's not going to necessarily ruin the piece for you. If you have like HP percent, you know, crit rate, and then like, you know, break effect, and then the last one's like a flat defense stat, that's not actually a bad piece because the other effects are so good, it kind of outweighs that one bad thing about it, okay? Now, this piece, as you can tell, is not a very good piece because it doesn't have enough of what we're looking for here. Maybe you can roll on this piece and get something better, but it's not that great. Let's talk about this piece here. This is also not good. It, um, it looks good on a lot of other characters because you have attack, you have attack percent, you have crit damage, break effect. 
This crit damage and break effect are great, but these two top attack stats do not matter on Blade at all. They are not really going to do much for the character. Um, now, because these other stats are so good, somebody might want to use this as a placeholder until they get something better. That's not a bad idea, but I would still try to go for, you know, HP, percent, crit rate. Crit damage isn't bad because this crit rate's going to be pretty good, but, you know, focus on things like that. Like I said, crit, crit damage is okay to go for, but crit rate is usually better in my opinion because you don't get crit damage unless you actually get your crit. Now, with the body piece, let's talk about the body piece here. So the body piece is going to have the most versatility in terms of what you'll end up getting. This one here that has crit rate isn't bad, but you have effect hit rate and speed on these other substats and attack. So the only thing good on this entire body piece is the crit rate. So you see what I mean by Blade's a little bit more of a picky character to farm for because he realistically only wants HP percent, you know, crit rate, um, maybe break effect you know, crit damage, things like that. He doesn't want to see... Speed's okay, but you don't want him to go too fast You will, because you want a healer that can keep up with his life drain. If you have a healer that can't keep up with his life drain, then it's going to be a little bit of an issue, especially if he's moving quicker. The more turns he has, the more life drain he does. So just think about that, okay? Now, the boots over here, these boots are terrible. Some of these other pieces that I was showing you, you can kind of get by for a little while until you farm something better with those, but these boots are actually just bad. Defense percent is a very bad stat for Blade. You don't want to see this. You don't want to see this defense stat. You don't want to see this attack. HP percent is realistically like the only really good thing on these boots. The break effect is okay as well. Break effect's really good in this game. But even these boots down here, defense, you have the HP and the HP percent, you know, but these defense percents right here are not going to be very good. If the main stat is like defense percent, that is not good for the character. You don't want to see that. Now, um, let's talk about the planar spheres. So there's two planar sphere and orbs that you can go for for the character, but this is the one that I would go for personally. It's the new one. Um, the two-piece increases the wearer's crit rate by 8%. When the wearer's current crit rate reaches 80% or higher, the wearer's basic attack and skill damage increase by 20%. So this is going to be basically the new DPS set. Most DPS characters in the game are going to want this new set, and Blade's going to want it very specifically because it increases his crit rate, which is really good for him, and it increases his basic attack as well. The skill damage is not going to matter, but his basic attack gets increased, and that's mostly what he does is use his basic attack. So that's really easy. Go for this one in my opinion. You can also use the Salsado as well. Two-piece increases the wearer's crit rate by 8%. Ring a bell, anyone? When the wearer's current crit rate reaches 50% uh, or higher, the wearer's ultimate and follow-up attack damage increases by 15%. This is also very good too, but I think that the other one is probably going to be more reliable. In some situations, Sosato is actually probably going to deal more damage if you get a lot of ultimates and if you're recharging your energy really quickly. But in my opinion, I would go for the new set, which is the Rudolent Arena here. This is what I personally would go for, but you can use Sosato if you have good Sosato while you farm for the other one. And just like with the other relic pieces, you're going to want to go for something like this piece here, actually, that I happen to have. HP percent crit rate, break effect. These are three really good stats. This is actually a pretty solid piece. The only problem with it is that it's a four star uh, piece, not a five star piece. But this is a totally good fill in slot while you farm for other things. If you also can find wind damage, that's actually a really good stat to go for on the planar sphere as well. And with the rope, same thing. Uh, good example here, HP. Uh, effect resistance is not important for the character really because you're not going to get enough of it for it to matter So just consider that and with Silsado you go for the exact same things wind damage HP crit ray crit damage things like that Now let's talk about the team compositions real quick blade is a very picky character He only wants certain people on his team and not others now any healer will work but Locha is far and above the best healer for Blade because the combo between the two of them is so good it allows them to actually be able to clear Memory of Chaos 10 by themselves. But any healer will work on Blade, just Locha is the best. 
Now, the support class is arguably more important, in my opinion. Branya, with the extra turns that she provides, is allowing Blade to really, really pop off and deal the most damage he can possibly deal. This is the best support that you could pair with Blade. If you don't have Branya, you can use Silver Wolf. Silver Wolf can apply wind weakness to the enemy, allowing Blade to really deal an increased amount of damage, while also debuffing the enemy and dealing an increased amount of damage herself. And Pela is a really solid free-to-play option as well, because she debuffs the enemy, doing a similar thing to Silver Wolf, just not quite as well, so free-to-play players probably want to use Pela. Do not use Ting Yun or Yu Kong, because their attack buffs just aren't as strong as the other characters. If you had to choose between one of the two, go for Ting Yun, because she does an overall damage bonus but don't use them in my opinion. If this video was helpful to you, leave a like and subscribe. If not, leave a hate thread in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Good luck on your 50-50s. Peace out.